Each year we welcome thousands of nonprofits to the Nonprofit Technology Conference. This year, the 12 NTC will be held in San Francisco on April 3rd through the 5th. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC. Or if you can't join us in person, find out how you can still connect, learn, and change the world at the NTC Online. Learn more at n10.org forward slash NTC forward slash online. We've put together a series of video podcasts featuring just a few of the more than 100 sessions at the event. Today, we're talking to Jason Mogus of Communicopia, who will be leading the session, Digital Team Structure, the Underlying Foundation for Innovation. Tell us who you are. My name is Jason Mogus, and together with my colleague, Michael Silverman, we're doing a session on digital teams to uh, promote the research that we did in the fall of 2011 around uh, just the makeup of nonprofit digital teams, which we consider the foundational principle for all the online success that we're looking for. Why are you focused on digital teams? Yeah, I guess, you know, we've been in this business for close to, this is our 19th year, and, and we look back a couple of years ago at the patterns of projects that went particularly well. You know, most of them were fine, and, and then there were half a dozen that were like, and Michael had worked on a couple that, that did that too. And, and when you look back, it's, it's, you know, what are the kind of patterns or the attributes of these? It's, it's, it's not always the, certainly it's not the agency you hire, and it's not, the technology you choose very often it's actually often it's a I mean it's this magic mix but a core part of the mix is the is the actual makeup of the team for the nonprofit and and you know do they have the right leader in the with the right mandate um, do they have the right skills underneath them in their team and and ultimately uh, is the organization set up around them for success with the things they're trying to do what does a good digital team look like I can't say that I've met yet a digital team that's perfectly optimized um, and you know, there's no such thing as perfect, but but most of us, and I've done this work before as well. I've also run a digital team for a global climate campaign, and I learned a lot through that. Um, you know, it's it's all about is there organizational alignment around us? Um, are we making the business and mission case to those higher up that what we're doing is actually uh, core, fundamental to what the campaign goals are, to what the organizational goals are? Um, and is there an enabling culture of collaboration and you know, cross silo working, and um, uh, what do we do with community and with listening, with the information we hear from our constituency? Are we willing to give up any power from our experts? Where in the organization should digital teams live? I mean, what we found is forty-five percent of digital teams out of the sixty-seven we interviewed do live in communications, uh -huh. but eighteen percent, and we expect that to be a growing number when we do the survey again this year, are are reporting directly to the executive director, uh -huh. and. Uh, so I guess when you ask, you know, what, what did we see across the sector, what I found is there is no one perfect way to do it. Basically, my advice to groups is that um, align yourself with the leading edge of your organization. So if your organization is really policy driven, then align yourself deeply with, with that group. If it's really, um, if it's really fundraising driven, you got to make sure that you're, you're aligned with the fundraising group. Or even I mean, one of the most sophisticated structures, as we like to see, is these hybrid structures where... A digital team isn't just like a wild castle in the middle of the organization and they control everything that goes on the internet or in social channels, but they're certainly uh, a, a collaborative leader that is actually driving a, an overall strategy as well as on top of everything that's happening in the organization. Here's the, the big question is, is how, how matrixy can we be inside an organization that's completely siloized and politicized and kind of rigid in its structures. Mm -hmm. um, how, how can we build a shop that kind of models the world that we know we want to live in um, within these structures that don't necessarily support that kind of leadership? Mm -hmm. um, and how can we create cultures? And ultimately, it's all around people, which is why things like the NTC and, and the Web of Change conference that, that I'm involved with are, are really, we're really about training leaders so that we can be these kind of collaborative you know, entrepreneurs, if you will. What's your favorite example of a team that worked? We got a, a call from an organization in D.C. that that wanted to create a, a campaign around fundraising for malaria bed nets. And, and a, a columnist in Sports Illustrated had written an article that raised a million dollars to, to send these, these malaria bed nets to Africa. And you have to think at the time that the, the malaria issue was really depressing and it was really dry. It was really scientific the way it was campaigned around. It was overwhelming. Africa was in a, in a terrible state. Um, and through this campaign, we made it really simple and easy to get involved. We really empowered people. We had a campaign blog, which was quite innovative at the time. And the organization was very networked in how it ran the campaign. It had deep, deep partnerships with a number of organizations like the NBA and the Methodist Church. So this campaign, the Nothing But Nets campaign, ended up raising, I think, about $12 million in its first year. Um, it's actually about $63 million now, five years later. 
What made that team work? I guess the hidden backstory of that is the project kind of was a bit of a skunk works. It didn't come through the traditional channels of the big wigs deciding what kind of campaign to have and then going out and getting a celebrity to be in that came campaign. It was a free agent that started that campaign. It was an independent columnist who had a big following and had never done social change before. And he came to this institution and then they built a campaign around him. And, and again, I, I don't see that nearly often enough. We see all these free agents out in the world making sometimes bigger waves than big institutions. Um, but how are we collaborating? You know, it's another thing that, that we don't see all that often is how nonprofits are set up to, you know, can we embrace these ideas of free agents and, and network organizations, these kind of tiny ones that are growing really fast, or do we kind of push them away and, and try to do our own thing still?